Hi everyone, I'm Devin Coombs, CPA, and today I'm going to go over the journal entries for purchasing a laptop for cash uh, for our business where that laptop is classified as equipment. And then we're going to go over all the financial statement impact for this journal entry. We're going to go over the original journal entry, the purchase of the laptop, and the depreciation of that laptop today. So let's dive into it. So uh, purchase of a laptop for cash, we're going to use this data set. On December 1st, 2019, Coombs Inc. purchased a business laptop for $1,800 which has an expected useful life of three years. So the first entry we have to worry about is uh, the purchase of the laptop. And so laptop is an asset, an asset right? Uh, it's gonna be in plant property and equipment because it's long-term, it's a long-term fixed, a fixed asset, has a useful life of greater than a year, making it long-term. As it's an asset, debit is the normal balance for it, so the debit is going to increase the laptop's balance by 1800 on the balance sheet. We're paying cash for it, so we're gonna reduce cash. Cash is an asset. A short-term asset it's going to lower with the credit so we credit the cash this makes our debits equal our credits but then if we're doing our year-end financial statements we also have to do the depreciation for the one month and so something I want all the students to recognize is right this is not an expense and the reason it's not an expense is because of the matching principle we're gonna match uh, the expenses to the revenues they create and since this laptop has a three-year useful life it's going to be making revenues for we're assuming the next three years and that's why we're going to capitalize it's called capitalizing the expense into an asset that's why we're debiting the asset but then because we've capitalized that expense we have to recognize that expense over the laptop's useful life and we're going to use this using the straight line depreciation method there's other depreciation methods i'm going to go over in other classes uh, like double declining but today we're just going to use straight line and that's going to we're going to assume that's the accounting policy for coombs inc um, so the depreciation expense is $50, and then the credit is going to be accumulated depreciation. So the debit to depreciation expense, we know expense is a debit normal balance, so the expense is increasing, and accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. So uh, it's a, it decreases an asset account, specifically the laptop account. Uh, so the accumulated depreciation is going to decrease that laptop or equipment amount by $50. For that period. How did we come up with a 50? Well, we just take the 1800 divided by 36. That's the amount of months in, uh, in three years. Three times 12 is the 36. 1800 divided by the 36. It's only one month left in 2019, the, the full month of December, and that's where we get our $50. So then we do our checks. Uh, do debits equal credits? Do, let's use our T accounts to determine if debits equal credits. And so we can use that uh, dead and clear acronym, uh, assets, the equipment, uh, that, that A in dead uh, is a debit normal balance, so we know assets are increased by a debit normal balance. That's equipment, uh, and specifically laptop. So assets is the classification, uh, equipment is the subclassification, and laptop is what would be the account we'd have in, on the general ledger, or the subledger. Uh, and then uh, the expenses, we have depreciation expense for the period of 50. Expense. Uh, is the E in the dead, which is a debit normal balance, so it's increasing by 50. So what's our credits? Uh, to make sure that uh, they all tie out, we know that cash was spent. So if we're spending cash, it's a reduction of cash. I can remind everyone, if we increase cash, we debit it. If we decrease cash, we credit it. So since cash has a normal, is an asset account, we'll decrease with a credit. This is a normal balance of a debit. And then we have the contra asset account of the accumulated depreciation for our equipment. Of 50. Since it's a contra asset, it reduces assets. Assets have a normal balance of a debit, and so the contra asset is going to have a normal balance of a credit. And our 1850 equals our 1850. So we're okay on this check, uh, and now we're going to go into our financial statements, which include the second check of the accounting equation on the balance sheet, where assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. And so first we'll do our income statement. Now uh, from our first uh, from our first video, we didn't have any revenue or expenses, but now we do. So our, we have no revenues, but we have a cost and expenses of gen general and admin. We'd call this general and administrative expense for laptops. We'd assume that it's going to just be an administrative expense, and that would be our classification for it, not selling and marketing or, um, or cost of goods sold. And so our total cost and expenses for the period of 50, so our net loss is going to be that uh, negative, uh, we're going to have $50 in net loss. So the next financial statement we'd make is that statement of shareholders equity. Uh, now we'd add a column to the statement of shareholders equity and a line, a line for the net loss 
and a column for the accumulated deficit is now we have an accumulated deficit at the end of the year when we close out that net loss. So everything else has stayed the same and uh, now we've just added in the net loss. And so hopefully you can compare the prior journal entry to the current journal entry, the prior journal entry being the common stock and APIC in order to see how these financial statements would be built. Then we'd have the balance sheet, which is also known as the accounting equation. And so we'll walk through the accounting equation and see how that's proven out. All right, so our cash is 8,200 now because we've had 10,000 from our first video and we reduced it by 1,800 um, for the payment of the equipment. Now we have net equipment of 1750. That's the laptop of 1800 minus the accumulated depreciation. That's how it'd be presented on the balance sheet. And then we have our liabilities. We haven't incurred any liabilities yet. We haven't borrowed money from creditors. And we have our equity. So we still have our common stock of $10, our APIC of 9,990, and we have our accumulated deficit of 50. Uh, that what came from our income statement and our statement of shareholders equity. Uh, so we can see that this all balances. Uh, we have 18,200 plus the 1750. So that gives us our 9,950. And then the same here, we have 10,000 minus the 50, 9,950 uh, is equal to 9,950. Uh, so always remember that all of this balance sheet, all of, the, uh, all of this uh, accounting equation is telling us is what we have and if we owe it or own it. So the last financial statement is the statement of cash flows. And so previously we had just had the financing activities of issuing the common stock, uh, but now we are going to adjust it for the operating activities as well for the period. And this is where it can get interesting. So we go into the indirect method in detail in other videos, but this is just so you see the financial statement impact quickly. And so we have the beginning cash of zero, right? Our business started on December 1st, so there's no beginning cash at, in January or when we started the business until it was funded. Uh, then our operating activities, we have a net loss of $50, and, but we have a non-cash expense that needs to be adjusted out of that of depreciation of equipment. And so that non-cash expense has to be added back because we didn't spend any money on the operating activities, right? And so there's no, we debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. There's no cash in that entry, but we've affected net income. So we have to reverse that and to reconcile net income. So effectively we had net cash provided by operating activities nothing there is no cash spent or provided by operating activities then we have our eighteen hundred dollar purchase of equipment and our issuance the ten thousand dollar issuance of common stock which is which gets us to the ending cash on our balance sheet back here of eight eight thousand two hundred and that's our check and so that's it uh, thanks for joining us i'll keep going over these journal entries and continue to build out these financial statements with you all so you all can be experts in financial accounting. Thank you for watching. Please watch my other videos and please subscribe and don't hesitate to comment below if you have any questions or would like to see videos on any other topics related to accounting, finance, or business. Have a great day, bye.